Last time we left off with me receiving fresh cacao pods from Mantoso Gardens. This time we'll get to see how I take those pods and grow myself a cacao army. Takes quite a lot of peeling. When I first got the pods, I decided to open them both on the same day. Now, as you'll see, I only did the large Trinitario first and the Criollo on the next day. Well, that's because, well, preparing the seeds takes quite a long time. And I, of course, forgot about that. Fortunately, the seeds inside a fresh cacao pod can remain viable for some time. So, again, a reason for getting cacao pods and not just seeds. I opened the Colorado Trinitario variety first and I took very special care with the knife to make a clean cut straight around and not to cut any seeds. Now the reason why I am cutting this and not just like in a jungle just use a machete and or break it open on a rock is so I can save the shells and have these nice little paperweight shells and they're really nice to have. I opened the pod to reveal a large mass of seeds covered in a slimy white pulp and attached to this large mesh of strings that sort of acts like the umbilical cord for the cacao. As I scoop the seeds, note that the pulp, the arrow around the seeds, is quite edible and quite delicious. Though the pulp isn't that great when it has to go through a long shipping process. Straight off the tree, the pulp is absolutely delicious. And it has this very delicate and light sweet flavor. That's really hard to describe, but, but that pulp, that pulp around the seeds, is what gives chocolate its chocolate flavor. When that pulp ferments, it uh, causes a bunch of complex chemical reactions that, first of all, the heat produced from them uh, kills the seed and then it imparts a bunch of reactions to the seed making chocolate what chocolate is. This, the bitter seed inside is nothing without that covering of the arrow. Now what I'm doing now is peeling each and every seed of the slimy pulp. It sort of has the slimy pulp and then this sort of this sort of soft uh, shell around each seed and I'm peeling it and I'm peeling it for two reasons. One, so I don't have to deal with the massive pulp when I plant the seeds and two, to maybe help the germination and well, allow it to germinate easier and some people don't, uh, some people, Brian included in his tutorial on growing chocolate, he doesn't peel the seeds individually, he just puts them in the ground and they grow for me, I don't do that because I don't have a lot of pods and, well, first of all, it's fun to peel the seeds to some extent, but I would recommend doing it if you're doing it on your own, if only for the reason to not have a mass of seeds, a uh, mass of the pulp when you plant them. And actually, it's been quite successful. I have had 100% germination rates when I grow cacao. After I peel the seeds, I put them in the small glass of water so they don't dry out and to clean them a little more. And I move on to the next seed and again and again and again. Even with a pair of helping hands or two, it does take quite a long time to do them all. But at least to me, it is quite fun. Eventually, the process is complete and it's time to plant the seeds. So I use these sort of red plastic cups. I pack the cups with soil. I put a small little indentation, put the cacao seed cover with a little bit more soil and onto the next one. And I do this until I plant all the cacao seeds. After I finish planting all the seeds, I water the cups and put them on trays and put them away and wait for the cacao to sprout. Now I don't put them in sun. You don't want to put cacao in full sun, especially when it's small and really you don't really need to put it in 
full sun f at all. Cacao naturally doesn't grow in full sun, it's an understory plant and it doesn't need full sun, which is good for me, of course, because I don't really have access to that much full sun, but don't put them in full sun because it'll burn the leaves and that's not good. And now, of course, I take one or two of the seeds and I put it in um, my paper towel method of germinating, just so I can check on it every day and see if the seed is germinating so I get to see if all the other seeds are germinating too based on that one seed. So the next day I repeated the same process with my beloved Criollo. Except this time, when I peel the seeds, notice that they're white, not the typical brownish purplish. This truly is a criollo, and I got very excited when I saw that. After I finished planting the criollo seeds, well, I had quite a lot of trays of my little cocoa cups. Cacao germinates very quickly, it can take like maybe even one or two, three days for it to germinate. Now, how it sprouts is it sort of the bean lifts out of the cup and it grows up a little, then it splits open and those, the cacao bean sort of acts like the first leaves of the cacao plant. And when they open, you have these beautiful little delicate growing tips with these small translucent leaves and it really is beautiful. They grew nicely, basically all of them sprouted, and I now had a cacao army. They grew and grew, and soon it was time to take them all outside, where, during the summer, they all flourished. consider subscribing. If you really like me for some unknown reason, consider supporting me on Patreon, where I release extended cuts of basically all the videos I've done on YouTube.
in addition to other special videos and updates and other rewards. Also, for now, that's the only place where I offer plans. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.